The physiology or function of the digestive system. The main functions of the digestive system are ingesting food, digesting food, absorbing nutrients, elimination of waste products. The digestive processes. The processes of digestion include six activities. Ingestion, propulsion, mechanical, or physical digestion, chemical digestion, absorption, and defecation. The first of these processes is ingestion, refers to the entry of food into the alimentary canal through the mouth. There, the food is chewed and mixed with saliva, which contains enzymes that begin breaking down the carbohydrates in the food plus some lipid digestion via lingual lipase. Chewing increases the surface area of the food and allows an appropriately sized bolus to be produced. Food leaves the mouth when the tongue and pharyngeal muscles propel it into the esophagus. This act of swallowing, the last voluntary act until defecation, is an example of propulsion which refers to the movement of food through the digestive tract. It includes both the voluntary process of swallowing and the involuntary process of peristalsis. Peristalsis consists of sequential alternating waves of contraction and relaxation of alimentary wall smooth muscle, which act to propel food along. These waves also play a role in mixing food with digestive juices. Peristalsis is so powerful that foods and liquids you swallow enter your stomach even if you are standing on your head. Digestion includes both mechanical and chemical processes. Mechanical digestion is purely physical process that does not change the chemical nature of the food. Instead, it makes the food smaller to increase both surface area and mobility. It includes mastication or chewing as well as tongue movements that help break food into smaller bits and mix food with saliva. Although there may be a tendency to think that mechanical digestion is limited to the first steps of the digestive process, it occurs after the food leaves the mouth as well. The mechanical churning of food in the stomach serves to further break it apart and expose more of its surface area to digestive juices, creating an acidic soup called chyme. Segmentation, which occurs mainly in the small intestine, consists of localized contractions of circular muscle of the muscularis layer of the alimentary canal. These contractions isolate small sections of the intestine, moving their contents back and forth while continuously subdividing, breaking up, and mixing the contents. By moving food back and forth in the intestinal lumen, segmentation mixes food with digestive juices and facilitates absorption. In chemical digestion, starting in the mouth, Digestive secretions break down complex food molecules into their chemical building blocks. For example, proteins are turned into amino acids. These secretions vary in composition, but typically contain water, various enzymes, acids, and salts. The process is completed in the small intestine. Food that has been broken down is of no value to the body unless it enters the bloodstream and its nutrients are put to work. This occurs through the process of absorption, which takes place primarily within the small intestine. There, most nutrients are absorbed from the lumen of the alimentary canal into the bloodstream through the epithelial cells that make up the mucosa. Lipids are absorbed into lacteals and are transported via the lymphatic vessels to the bloodstream. In defecation, the final step is digestion. Undigested materials are removed from the body as feces. 
the digestive system from appetite suppression to constipation. Age-related changes in the digestive system begin in the mouth and can affect virtually every aspect of the digestive system. Taste buds become less sensitive, so food isn't as appetizing as it once was. A slice of pizza is a challenge, not a treat, when you have lost teeth, your gums are diseased, and your salivary glands aren't producing enough saliva. Swallowing can be difficult, and ingested food moves slowly through the alimentary canal because of reduced strength and tone of muscular tissue. Neurosensory feedback is also dampened, slowing the transmission of messages that stimulate the release of enzymes and hormones. Pathologies that affect the digestive organs, such as hiatal hernia, gastritis, and peptic ulcer disease, can occur at greater frequencies as you age. Problems in the small intestine may include duodenal ulcers, maldigestion, and malabsorption. Problems in the large intestine include hemorrhoids, diverticular disease, and constipation. Conditions that affect the function of accessory organs and their abilities to deliver pancreatic enzymes and bile to the small intestine include jaundice, acute pancreatitis, cirrhosis, and gallstones. In some cases, a single organ is in charge of the digestive process. For example, ingestion occurs only in the mouth and defecation only in the colon. However, most digestive processes involve the interaction of several organs and occur gradually as food moves through the alimentary canal. Some mechanical digestion occurs in the mouth. Some absorption can occur in the mouth and stomach, for example, alcohol and aspirin. The regulatory mechanisms. Neural and endocrine regulatory mechanisms work to maintain the optimal conditions of the lumen needed for digestion and absorption. These regulatory mechanisms, which stimulate digestive activity through mechanical and chemical activity, are controlled both extrinsically and intrinsically. Some disorders and diseases of the gastrointestinal disorders include gastroesophageal reflux disease. This condition is largely caused by gastric acid flowing upwards from the stomach into the esophagus. Those suffering from this condition will often feel a burning sensation radiating near the top of the stomach. Cholecystitis. This condition is known as inflammation of the gallbladder. Gallstone development can block the gallbladder's release of bile, leading to an inflammatory response. Surgical removal or cholecystectomy or laser stone crushing known as lithotripsy are often the treatment options. Cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a condition whereby the liver scars. Advanced cirrhosis is life-threatening. It generally can not be reversed. It is caused by different forms of liver disease and chronic alcoholism. Cirrhosis often has no signs or symptoms until liver damage is extensive and may include fatigue, easily bleeding or bruising, loss of appetite, nausea, edema, weight loss, itchy skin, jaundice, and ascites. Esophageal cancer. This is cancer of the esophagus. The cancer can occur anywhere along the esophageal tube and can be caused by factors including tobacco use, alcohol, and chronic acid reflux. Hepatitis A, B, and C. Inflammation of the liver is referred to as hepatitis. This condition can be caused by several factors such as viruses, alcohol consumption, toxins, and drug interactions. 
In some cases, it can be caused by the autoimmune response in the body. There are five types of viral hepatitis, A, B, C, D, and E. Celiac disease or celiac sprue. Individuals who possess celiac disease have an immune sensitivity reaction occurring in the small intestines when they consume gluten. Typically, people with this condition are genetically predisposed to the condition. Damage to the small intestine will occur if continued consumption of gluten occurs. Individuals, once diagnosed, eat a gluten-free diet as a best approach for management of the condition. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are chronic inflammatory bowel diseases whereby a section or segments of the digestive tract experience inflammation. Crohn's disease can occur anywhere along the digestive tract from the mouth to the to the colon, although it is off, most often found in the small intestines. This often leads to malabsorption of nutrients from food. Ulcerative colitis is a localized inflammation of ulcers in the colon. Colon cancer. Cancer formation of the colon portion of the digestive tract. It is typically found in older adults. Colon cancer is often diagnosed through a colonoscopy. Hernia. A hernia occurs when an organ or fatty tissue squeezes through a weak spot in a surrounding muscle or connective tissue. A hiatal hernia is found in the upper stomach region. Irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel syndrome is a common disorder affecting the large intestine. Irritable bowel syndrome often involves abdominal pain as sensitive nerve tissue within the colon react to movement of food and waste through the digestive tract. Along with the abdominal pain, Individuals often experience gas and bloating. Diet and lifestyle modifications often help in the management of the condition. Polyps. A polyps is a small growth of tissue protruding outward from the intestinal wall. Some cancers in the intestine start off as a polyp. Typically, they are found in people over the age of 50. Polyps start as a small collection of cells found within the colon. Most are harmless, but can transition over time into a cancerous growth.